So in this video, I wanna talk about the vertical line test. So imagine we have a set of points in the xy plane and it gives us the graph of some equation or it's just, it's a collection of points, right? Well, that graph will be the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph at, ex at most one point. It could be that you have an inter a vertical line outside the domain of the graph, so therefore it doesn't intersect it at all. That's fine, but we're looking for graphs whose will intersect vertical lines only at one point. So you look at this first example, this, uh, this, this yellow line right here. This is the graph of the equation y equals 2x minus 1, although we don't need to worry about that equation right now. You'll notice that as you start drawing vertical lines here along this graph, it intersects the graph only at a unique point for each line. Right, Different lines will have different intersections, but each line intersects the graph at only one place. And therefore, this graph would get a pass, a pass with the so-called vertical line test, which was to say that this is a function. This is the graph of a function. A function graph will always pass this vertical line test. And the reason behind that is if there were two different, two different points that shared the same vertical line. So we have like this right here, two comma, say four, and two comma, say two, right here. These two points, because this is a graphical representation of the function, this would tell us that f of two equals four, but it would also equal, f of two would equal two. It can't be both, right? Uh, the function evaluation has to make a decision. It's gotta be one or the other. f of two either equals four or it equals two or something else. Make a choice already. Um, if our graph failed the vertical line test, that would be the predicament we would be trapped in right there. We'd be trying to si assign two different y coordinates to the same x coordinate. Um, this second picture right here, this is a parabola. In fact, it's the parabola y equals x squared. You can see that every vertical line intersects the graph at exactly one point. So this one also is going to be a pass to the vertical line test. Uh, so this is also the graph of a function. Uh, finally, though, example C here, uh, this is the graph of the equation y squared equals x cubed plus 1. We can actually see here that there are instances where this graph does not pass the vertical line test. This has a situation where the y coordinate is 1 and the y coordinate is negative 1. It can't be both, right? x equals f of 0 would have to be 1 or negative 1. It can't be both, right? You have to make a decision. So with regard to the vertical line test, this is actually a fail. It fails the vertical line test, and so that tells us it's not a function. Uh, determining whether a graph is a function or not is as simple as running this vertical line test. Now, I do want to make one, one slight disclaimer right now, that when you look at the two, the two graphs that were functions, um, the first one passes the horizontal line test, but the second one fails uh, the horizontal line test. That has no bearing on whether it's a function or not. I mean, heck, the the elliptic curve here, it passes the horizontal line test. To be a function, you must pass the vertical line test and you don't have to worry about anything else. It does turn out that the horizontal line test will have some bearing on properties of the function, but that's a topic for another day. And so we can very easily test whether a graph gives us a function or not from the vertical line test. Algebraically, this is a little bit more challenging, but that's a topic for another video.